Today on Executive Report, we have someone who's near to my heart, the president and CEO of Etruant, Ida Keener. She's going to talk to us about how she was born in France and how she moved all around the world to find herself in the U.S. living the American dream. She's going to give us some tips and information on how to secure our networks and how to make sure that our companies are completely secure when it comes to cyber. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and stay tuned. So today at Executive Port Report, we have one of my all-time favorite people, Miss Ida Keener. Um, I've known you for the better part of a decade, and from the first time I met you, it, it's like we, we just hit it off right away. So to, to give you guys some information about Ida before I start, so Ida was originally born in France, uh, moved to Tunisia, studied IT, uh, learned all about cybersecurity, and eventually made her way over to the United States to start her own business. And during all of that, um, she continued to excel, continued to be successful, and now she's living the American dream, um, all the way from France originally. So first off, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> and, it's good uh, to be here. I really have to ask. So obviously, I've, I've not been to France. I have had some French wine, but I mean, is French wine really that much better than any other wine or U.S. wine? <sighs> well, I'm biased, as you know. <laughs> um French wine, um, there is like a big variety of French wines that I absolutely adore. I can tell you I've never met an Amarone I didn't like, <laughs> and that's definitely Italian. There is really, really good cabs. So I couldn't tell you if French wine are the best wines. It really depends on what you like. Got it. So here's what I know. When I go to my favorite liquor store and I go down the aisle and I see the imports of French wine and I, I love them. Don't get me wrong. They're mm -hmm. delicious. And I pick one up and it's a $50 bottle, an $80 bottle, a $90 bottle. And then I look across the way and I see some other wines um, that are $9, 10 now, Granted, they might be in a box, uh -huh. but, but at the end of the night when I've had my third glass, does it matter if it's in a box? It does. Oh my gosh. It absolutely does, but you don't have to spend $50 for a good, good French wine. Well, you're going to have to educate me more about that. I have. <laughs> yes, you have. You have. <laughs> All right. So did I get that right? Born in France, moved to Tunisia, came to the U.S. to start your own business. All of it was true to the exception of one part. Um, I didn't come to the U.S. to start my own business. Okay. I came to the U.S. to follow my ex-husband and um, eventually he went away. The starting the business kind of happened organically. Did it? Mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, so uh, did you have different career plans when you came to the U.S.? I actually didn't have a career plan at all. Really? I came When I came, I didn't have a, um, a work visa. So I had to apply for an H-1B, work for an IT company, then work for another IT company. Eventually, 2009, I started a Truant. Got it. Well, I, I have to be honest, you couldn't have picked a better time, in my opinion, to start an IT and cybersecurity company. Um, so that was, what, 2005-ish? somewhere around When there? I started it, it was in 2009. But, you know, cybersecurity didn't start becoming a buzzword until probably 2010. That's true. And it seems like today uh, there are more cyber attacks and more issues with ransomware than, than we've ever heard before. I mean, entire hospital systems are going down with ransomware. Um, city governments are going down with ransomware. I mean, how do you, uh, how do you think that this has evolved so quickly and, and why? Well, if you look at the evolution of technology in general, um, going back from the day I came to the U.S., which was back in 2000, so 2000 to 2010, really, um, managed services, which is the proactive way of providing IT, really started to blossom toward 2005-ish. Um, then the first buzz buzzword that came out was the cloud, which nobody knew what the cloud was. And once the cloud became something that everybody was going towards to, um, cybersecurity became uh, even more relevant than before because the attackers uh, found a different vulnerability that they didn't have access to before. Hmm. Um, ah, so it was, a, it was an opportunity It was hackers. definitely an opportunity. And if you want to look at it from a hacker's perspective, hacking also has evolved over the years to the extent where um, from 2000 to 2010, the hacking world was um, thriving uh, with 
challenges. So mm-hmm. essentially, the bigger the better, you know, who's going to make the news, Wells Fargo, mm-hmm. Target, et cetera, et cetera. Then they realized that they didn't have to work that hard to get into an environment because 70 to 80% of the successful hack are coming from phishing mm-hmm. and emails. Um, Fishing with a PH, not with an F, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, so phishing attempt because, you know, you get an email, looks legit, you click on the link, you're inviting the ransomware in. Mm. Um, all of the sudden hackers didn't have to work that hard. And the reason why you were mentioning that it's becoming even more of a problem, now, especially during this pandemic, is they prey on people's emotions, unfortunately. And when the pandemic uh, started, you know, you had all these PPP applications, oh, government right. loans, and they started to mimic PPP applications and approvals and telling businesses that were already in a financial diehard situation, hmm. hey, your approval is here, click on this link to check the process of your application. They click on the link and they even <laughs> much more in the predicament than they were before they even started wow. the process. So educating people on not clicking on those links is crucial. Um, if you also want to talk about uh, how cybersecurity is becoming more important than ever now is because you have a hybrid world now where right. people are working remote. How do you secure that environment versus having people on premises? Hmm. Um, That's got to be much more difficult. It is, but... What I also learned from a hacking perspective, not that I'm a hacker, um, but- You have you a know, side job that nobody knows about? No, I wish I would make much more money than I do now. <laughs> but what they did is, because, you know, if you look at the evolution of the hacking world, it was a challenge before. It's not so much of a challenge now because it's easier. Mm-hmm. So um, they don't like- to work too hard to get into a network. Okay. What that means is if you put multiple layers of security, um, obviously you're going to have your antivirus, you're going to do patching, you're going to close your firewalls, you're going to do all those things and add different type of security layers of software, mm-hmm. educate the users not to click on those links. Um, what they do, and actually I did hear that from a what they call an ethical hacker uh, or white hat, <clears throat> that if it takes them three times to try to get into the network, chances are that they're going to move to the next external IP. So it's kind of a three strikes, you're out kind of role? Correct. So so ideally then, as an organization or, or a company, you'd like to have at least three layers of protection. Oh, absolutely. So do you think- I like five, personally. Five, five, all prime numbers, though. If you go five, seven, nine, you're yeah, good to go. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, one is not enough. I, I had a conversation with the prospect yesterday, and they were asking me, you know, do I really need that, that cybersecurity package? And I, <laughs> and I explained to her the same thing is, if you don't have at least the three layers of basic security, um, they're going to really look at you because they don't care how many people you have. They don't care what industry you have, mm-hmm. you are in. They don't care, um, you know, how much money you make. All they care about is can they get in. Fair enough. And how difficult are we going to make um, the environment for them to get in. Fair enough. So so I kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit because because obviously the, you you – kind of, I won't say fell into, but organically grew into your own business. Mm-hmm. But before you, you know, did that, I mean, what was it like for Ida Kina in France growing up? What, what did you want to be when you grew up? What, was it this? No, actually, I wanted to be an artist. An artist? Mm-hmm. Really? Like uh, like oil paints or? Correct. Really? Yeah. Do you have any uh, art still? Yeah, I still do that. I still yeah. have my, um, all of my setup in my basement every now and again, actually. I, I try to provide them as presents, but the gift. <laughs> so I know you have a great company culture. Do you ever do like a, an art night with the, with the team? I work with geeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they might hear this. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I do adore them. But uh, the thing that we do is, is like they love the challenge when it comes to brain challenges. So they mm. love like, escape rooms, things, ah. things of that nature. I see. I've never tried the arts thing. They were very, very interested in the axe throwing thing. Okay. Which I don't know if there is an art to it. 
probably is you know, and you not could, to throw in an axe. You could parlay them together. You could say, we have to paint a picture of your least favorite client and then put them up on the target for the axe throwing. We don't have any. You don't have any least favorite clients? We love them all. I, I know you guys do. <laughs> I know you guys do. <laughs> but I mean, so, so back to your point about phishing and the security issues, it seems like you know, you can have all of the layers of protection in the world, but if someone gets an email and they click on something they shouldn't click on, none of that matters. Is that right? Um, are you a sci-fi fan? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Do you know the analogy of the vampire? Can a vampire come into your house with it? Oh, yes. I you do know inviting this. them. I so, was actually a true blood friend back in the day, so yes. It's a great show. <laughs> um so viper, uh, vampires cannot get into your house unless you tell them it's okay to come in. That's right. Right? So the same analogy is true when it comes to your alarm system. You know, if you put, you know, the super duper alarm system in your house mm -hmm. and you leave your windows wide open, you know, that's not they really going to do anything. Mm -hmm. So you put all those security layers in place and then a user's or one user click on the link that they're not supposed to click on, you're essentially inviting the hacker in for ransomware. Uh. Um, saying that it doesn't really matter that they're still going to be able to infect your network, they will be able to infect your network, but if you have the proper software, proper security measures in place, chances are those security measures are going to stop that attack to, from, from spreading. I see, I see. So, okay, so you can have uh, like a dual layer of protection in that aspect. Correct. But it seems like it, it, when it all comes down to it, you know, people are the greatest risk. If, oh, absolutely. If a person clicks on something or if they go to a website they shouldn't go to, if they invite someone into the network or their house, so to speak, that's where the biggest risk is. So, I mean, you, you can't. I, I don't guess anyhow you can put security in place for people. Like, how do you how do you overcome that problem? Security awareness training. You have to mm. train users, organizations on how not to click on those emails, or at, at least recognize the signs okay. of what those emails look like. Because yes, they're going to look like Amazon. They're going to look like FedEx. They're going to look like government emails. Mm. I mean, they put the logo. But usually when you point your mouse towards the sender, if you look at the email address, even if it's supposed to be from Amazon or FedEx, chances are the, it's, it might say FedEx ad, and then there's going to be some like weird characters at the, at the end <laughs> of the email address that nobody really pays attention to. Because like I said, they prey on people's emotions. So if they say, See. you've been hacked, or, or you're expecting a package, and all of a sudden it's been lost in real life, and you get that email, say, hey, we have recovered your package, or you're just like, oh my God, I've been waiting for this for so long. And you click on those, on those links. But preventing yourself from responding emotion emotionally on those emails and, and pay attention to where it's coming from and any signs towards the body of an email that may look not legit, <laughs> just send it to your IT. Got it. Just to be sure. Is, it. Should I click on this? Is this legit? We, we get those at least five a day. Oh, wow. So you mentioned training. Do you guys do that kind of training? Oh, absolutely. Is it uh, or I have, to, I have to ask. And without names, is there anyone that really fails the training? And you, you think to yourself, I can't believe someone clicked on this. Every organization, and you'd be really? surprised that usually it's the C level. It's usually the upper. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. That's too funny. Most of the times, the C level executive that actually click on those links. Have any of your clients gotten stuck with ransomware? Once in. 2017. In 2017? Yeah. So one time in, in in the last 13 plus years. And I'm assuming that's because they had good training that no one else has had it, right? Wait, you said your question was how, how many people have been hacked by ransomware? Well, how many? Yes. Have you had anyone? You've, have you had to deal with ransomware in the past? Right. So it was once in 2017 because they didn't have the proper security package that uh, we offer. Got they it. do now. Got it. <laughs> Understood. That makes sense. I actually have gotten those emails before in the past. Um, the one that I actually almost clicked on uh, was an email that supposedly came from my accounting department. Mm -hmm. And it had, um, I think it had some top tax information that I had to sign. And that's how they, they phrased it. And I almost clicked on it, but I didn't, thankfully. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. So switching gears a little bit, um, you guys obviously do a great job with cybersecurity and IT. 
But in my opinion, there's a lot of companies that do a great job with cybersecurity and That's IT a, out there. This is true. Uh, so there's something special about your organization that apparently no one else has because you've been so successful over the last 13 years. W- what is it? I mean, what's the secret sauce? Is it, fr- is it a French sauce? Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily French since I'm the only one in the organization that is French. But I think that the secret sauce, like like you like to call it, is the fact that our superpower is client relationship. We okay. have the ability to really, really connect on a, on a personal level hmm. to every single client that we work with. And because of that, and because, yes, they are geeks, and it's it's not like, you are talking to a robot or a machine. You're talking to real people that actually do care about your environment and go above and beyond to make sure that at the end of the day you're happy. Um, I always tell uh, the story that when I especially met people uh, people for the first time, I always ask them, are you in love with your IT company or not? Because if you're not in love with your IT company, then, you know, why stay? And I think <laughs> that's true with any really relationship. Because if, if somebody tells you, oh, my IT vendor, they're okay, then no, <laughs> I don't a, think you should settle for okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. That could that could translate to any professional service. Right. You know, accounting, marketing, IT, uh, definitely your lawyer. <laughs> True. But like you said, IT and cybersecurity in general, a lot of people can do it. But um, at the end of the day, you really do business with people you like. That's for sure. So, uh, so that that actually brings me to maybe a vulnerability then, uh, because your your team is so great at the relationship side of it. How do you uh, how do you keep them? Uh, because if you don't have this great culture, they may choose to go work for another company. Uh, I think that's a question you should ask them. But <laughs> we do have a great culture. We do have a great environment. You know, we. We have fun doing what we do. Um, mm. I'm actually exploring. You know what those, those, those game boards when it's it's a ping pong table and it has something else like you throw. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I forgot what it's called. It has a name for it. Because right now we have a foosball and we have darts, but you know they asked me for um, a ping pong table now. <laughs> uh, you'd think that we never do any work, but um, we have happy hours on Friday when it's not too crazy busy. Mm. You know. I dance in the middle of the help desk providing rocks. So I have heard about these rocks. Can you explain to me what these are? Because I find it fascinating. So um, rocks are, they marble, they're basically a rock in marble that says on the rock, you rock. How big are they? Are they like a... They're probably about this big. Okay. So... They're quite substantial. Okay. And every time they do something great or a client is praising them for something they did or whatever is the achievement or teamwork or could be really anything, Mm -hmm. um, I have to perform and, you know, I put on my phone, we will rock you from Queen. Uh, The music? Yeah. (laughs) So so you say you have to perform. Does that mean you're like dancing? I dance with the dogs because (laughs) the dogs usually follow along with me. We have two dogs in the office. That that helps too from when it comes to the environment. Um, so the dogs will perform with me and I provide and I hand the rock to whoever is the recipient of the okay. good work. And once they collect 10 of them, they get a gift card. Oh, wow. Okay. It's usually 25 bucks. Visa Got it. card. <laughs> and how often do you have to do this? At least two or three times a week. Got it. Got it. Well, that, that's... Yeah, they are that great. So you really put yourself out there. I can't imagine me or any of the people I've worked with in the past dancing across the office. Yeah, and I'm actually so thankful that nobody videoed it so far. <laughs> <laughs> now, the big question is, do you have to have a glass of French wine before you do that? No. No, you're just good to go? Yeah. <laughs> well, so obviously you've been around the world, uh, multiple places. Um, I think you visited uh, how many countries? Oh, my God. Dozens. Mm, something like that. Yeah. And how many languages, again, do you speak? Three. Three languages. So you're very cultured. Um, and I'm, I'm just really curious. So I've not visited a ton of countries. Um, but there's this message that's going around in the media um, that the U.S. is not the best place in the world to live any longer. And as someone that hasn't been around the world, I really don't know. So I'm curious. What's your opinion? Do you think here living the American dream as you've done, is this is still the best place in the world to live? I think if 
I have to answer this question truthfully. I would say that I obviously made America my home mm -hmm. and I have a very successful business. I love the people I work with and made tons of friends, <laughs> uh, which are now called family. <laughs> uh, I think every country I lived in has its charm. Okay. Um, I, I, I wouldn't retire here, I can tell you that, because, you know, I want to retire in the south of France, but that's of course. way down the road. Uh, but as far as living the American dream, yeah, I think I, I have been able to do just that, even though I think it would be more difficult to do what I've done here in another country. Oh, really? Yes. Why do you think that is? I think that the opportunities here are greater than elsewhere. Really? Okay. It's, you, have, you have more flexibility in doing certain things. Understood. Like starting an LLC, you know, starting a business from your basement. You know, these are things that you usually hear about in the U.S. In, in, in specifically, um, which I was exactly about, you know, was, which is something that I was able to do. Okay. Uh, it was not from my basement. I didn't have a basement at the time, but it was from my <laughs> room. <laughs> well, in France, they have wine cellars, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't basement. have that here. Um, <laughs> but I think that the, the difference is, is, is more on the technology side, if you want to look at... Um, because this is something that always fascinated me be between all the countries that I've visited when it comes to technology... Um, in the U.S., so from, from a quality of life standpoint, I, I, I adore doing what I do. I adore my life. I'm, I'm, I'm having a blast doing what I do. Um, from a technology standpoint, I think we are extremely behind compared to other countries. Oh, really? Especially England. Really? England? Mm -hmm. I, would, I would have expected you to say Japan or, or China. I haven't visited Japan or China, so I can't tell you. Oh, fair enough. You said country you visited. That, I did say that. <laughs> Thank you for holding me accountable. <laughs> I well, mean, we still send paper checks. <laughs> I don't. I still get paper checks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know my address, so feel free to send away. But all right. Well, first off, I want to thank you for being here today on Executive Report. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, it's always great speaking with you. And we will schedule another day to have some wine. Absolutely. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I also want to thank the viewers out there for looking. Uh, feel free to follow us on YouTube or any of your favorite uh, podcast channels. Mm -hmm.